approach to instruction that is not improving either the way the student plays golf, their enjoyment of the game, or their understanding of their own style, in my view, is instruction that's going in the wrong direction. Or it, it may be instruction that's being misunderstood, either by the student or the instructor. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of time today. So my presentation can only touch on a, a few points with the hope some of you may develop an interest or a desire to, uh, to read further about learning and understanding it. To understand learning is to understand that golf really can't be taught. Uh, an instructor's responsibility is to provide and support a learning environment. Please understand that a motor skill instructor really doesn't have any authority. It truly doesn't. A math teacher or a history teacher has authority because all the information you need to get better at math or history comes from that person. What motor skill research has found is the information we need to get better at motor skills comes more from the student than it does the instructor. So our job is to withdraw that information out. It would not be unusual to take a, a member of your club to a pro-am golf tournament where professional and amateurs were playing, and they certainly could recognize the difference between the amateur swing and the professional swing. Where they, their challenge is, they don't understand the differences. They see them, so our job is to explain and support the differences. We don't have to teach them a thing. They already know the difference between, visually, between what good swings look like and what they don't. Our job is to help explain those differences. I don't think because a person stands on a podium or is perceived as somebody different or advanced that you should necessarily follow what they say. If I don't get you to think today, I have failed miserably. If I don't get you to personalize what I say, I've failed miserably. I have to share information with you that you, in some way, can customize for your facility and for your students. When there is following, there is no education. If you just follow what the article says and you don't think about it. Intelligence means to draw out. Get your student to draw out the meaning of things as well as yourself. I'm not here to tell you how to teach. I've been asked to explain my approach to golf instructions and maybe the reasons why I, I've taken that approach. And possibly you may find some things what I say today to add to the, to the things you're already using in instruction. Study of human movement is called kinesiology. When you apply the principles mechanics to kinesiology, it's called biomechanics. In my view, if golf instruction is to rise above all the confusion that exists about the golf swing, about human motion, and about the way people learn, it will be essential that instruction have at its base a common set of terms, rigorously defined terms. This means more attention will have to be paid to precise definitions than we commonly do today. Although most aspects of force and motion and learning can be very technical, it's important not to get lost in that information, but rather focus on the concepts that they develop. An example, there is a law that says, once you create a force, if you control the direction of the force, you can control the direction of what that force hits. I suspect a pool, a pool cue is the easiest example of that. Create a force, control the direction of the force, you can control the direction of what the force hits. I would think we should be developing a golf swing that has few, if any, compensating movements. So that you can move the club on a predictable and repeatable path. The responsibility of the golf swing is to move the club on a path that has a relationship to the target. That's all it is. 
And the gospel according to Smithtown Landing is going to tell you that you probably want to do that with the fewest possible movements that are compensating movements. Remember, the path is always determined by the golf club at address and the posture of the student and the design of the club. Those three things. The design of the club, the posture of the student determines where this golf club shows up at address. And that's the path you want to move the golf club on. Because of biomechanical and kinesiology principles, neuro and mechanical interactions of the body and the laws of balance, we base all our information on the big muscles moving the small muscles, the big bones moving the small bones. We believe, and quite a bit of research also believes, that that's the best way to produce a predictable swing. Before I go into the slides, I'm going to touch on 10 points very quickly that we share with students almost from day one. First thing we share with students is we want them to see three lines. We want you to see the floor. We want you to see the wall and we want you to see the roof. We play baseball horizontally, we bowl vertically, and we play hockey and golf and field hockey on the roof of a house. That's the line we want students to see, the roof of a house. That roof corresponds with the shaft. The next thing we want students to understand is that the club does not move the golf ball. This, this floor is not moving this beach ball. The golf swing's purpose is to compress the ball so the ball can move itself. Most of our students are trying to move the ball with the club. The basketball floor does not move the basketball. The basketball vaults itself off the floor. The eyes don't see, the mouth doesn't taste, the ears don't hear. Everything happens in the brain first. Big muscles move small muscles. One of the things we want students to recognize is when a door closes, the inside of the door moves one inch, the outside of the door moves several inches. The other thing we want students to recognize when the inside moves the outside is when the inside is moving two miles an hour, the outside is moving 80 miles an hour. When the club head is going 80 miles an hour, your body is only going two miles an hour. Most students don't understand that. Gravity moves things at 32 feet per second. Well, that's a big deal. How's it going to help us get better at golf? My hands are only four feet from the hitting area. If nothing but gravity moved them, they'd get there in less than one-tenth of a second. They'd get there in less than one-tenth of a second. We want our students to understand that. It takes no physical effort to bring that golf club down. Research shows that all movement in the body is rotational. There's a very fine instructor, a man who makes a lot of progress with students, that bases his approach on the fact that we have two hip sockets and you can't turn around your spine. That is incorrect. You can turn around your spine. All the muscles that move your hips are in your thighs. Your trunk has nothing to do with your hips. But yet that instructor makes progress. It just shows how bright the brain is and how different every student is. Muscle power. Power is a result of velocity and force. If I push on a wall, I have no velocity. If I sit on an English racer in the wrong gear, all I have is velocity and no force. It's very interesting. The research shows maximum muscle power exists at 30% of its velocity. When golf instruction talks about tempo and timing, we are correct. When golf instruction talks about firing things quickly, we are incorrect. We have to get students to understand the difference between learning and performing, training and trusting. Okay.
The golf swing is an action in which certain things are caused to happen and other things are allowed to happen. Faults arise in trying to cause what should be allowed. Found that in centered skiing. I think instruction could be thought of as a tree. 